hold your pants up. This be the belt episode. Now on Dead and Denim. So this episode is broken up into two parts. The first is a denim discussion talking about the placement of Levi's belt loops and the pros and cons of their particular brand of belts. The second part of the episode is an LVC variations featuring as many of the different LVC, Levi's Vintage Clothing, belts I could find. Enjoy. Thanks for watching. Be a subscriber always helps. Thanks to my Patreon peeps. Woo! You guys keep me emotionally supported with your love. This video is meant to accompany the 1922 501 episode, which will come out in a week or two, or today if you're a Patreon member. Get in on the action and enjoy it commercial free for only a buck. So on a quick poll, you guys seem to love your belts. I can't wait to dive into the action. Let's see all the great ones they have and why I'm hesitant. I use belts some of the time when I go out. Don't need them on most of my pairs. I'm more partial to the cinch and suspenders, but I'm on board with the belt to train. You know, the belt is one of those features that can bring the outfit together, especially when your shoes and your belt just blend together with that right color. Sometimes you really want to show off the buckle, and I've got a few complaints about the Levi's belt, and I'd really like to gripe about them. I want to hear what you got, so put it in the comments. How do you like your LVC belt or your regular Levi's belt? What belt companies do you recommend for a good Western style leather belt? My first thing, the biggest thing I have to say about any belts that I've usually seen, particularly Levi's, is you want to upsize. This measurement they give you from the smallest to the next you know your range that you have it just comes across and snaps into the other belt loop if you have it on the loosest setting see that barely just goes through won't even go through the next belt loop on the largest setting you're doing a little better but you're not going to get to this setting by just measuring Upsize and make your own notch would be the best thing you could do. However, a lot of the patterned belts, you don't want to mess with that pattern. You want to get it just right. Some of you might not want to trim around on the other side. If you're 32 size waist, you need to buy like a 35 size belt. Basically get the longest size you can get and cut it down. This brings me to the placement of the belt loops. Like there are five belt loops. You got two in front that are really close together. You've got one in the back, which centered or off-centered, doesn't matter. It's too much space between the side ones, which also just kind of stick out like little alien loops if you look from the side. I don't like the way they pop out. So hide those in the back a little, more towards the patch. I don't really have an answer for any of these. I don't think adding additional belt loops makes it look better and I don't want to obstruct the pockets or the patch. The belt length shouldn't be excessively long, but it should be long enough to wrap around securely given a weight gain fluctuation range. Levi should be more accurate with their belt measurements, with their jean measurements, but they aren't. That's part of doing the channels like this. Throughout my life, most of my Levi's have worked perfectly for what they should have done, but overall I've found some frustration with the belts. Now it's time for the LVC variations. Let me start by saying I mostly cover the Levi's Vintage Clothing Collection. Most premium regular Levi's fans are used to Levi's belts and have a big buckle with a logo or some Old West symbol. And yes, there's a little bit of that in here, but the LVC line of belts takes a slightly different approach. Stick with me, I'll show you what's up. Up first is the Armadillo. Black leather with silver armadillos. Chrysler. Black leather with blue turquoise. Embossed buckle belt, yellow leather. Garrison. Black leather. A black woven. The sunset knot. A new braided belt. For you Old West fans, there's a rodeo hat buckle. And for the 21st century cowboy, 
electric rodeo. Raw is, of course, the most simple. I would have thought this was more my type of style, but there's a few others coming up that I think I like even more. Rose. Yeah, cowboys like flowers on their belts, apparently. Painted. Sunset painted. Sunset raw. Mountain fisherman. And probably at the top of the list as far as the uh, pure LBC collector, the Cone Mills logo. You see the pine cones, it's a butterfly too, but in turquoise. And then one last for you is the Saddleman Buckle, done by the LEC line. But check out a hit, real Saddleman Buckle from the 1970s. And while we're on historic ones, check out this orange tab belt from the 70s as well. And if we're going to go for it, then here it is. I found a 1920s rodeo championship belt. Of course, there are cheaper replicas. Of course, the button buckle is the Beastmaster. And for one last random item, a guitar strap. Didn't know what other episode to end up putting this in. So, and a big chunk of my audience are musicians. So here you go. Love your leather.